you want to be really a world-class city, you have to be at the forefront of defining what culture is in the future. And I think the Hearn Generating Station and what we're trying to do here as a cultural institution could be really something that is unique in the world. My name is Johan Weisbord, I'm the Artistic Director of the Luminato Festival and uh, Luminato is a large multi-arts, or maybe probably the largest multi-arts festival in North America. Uh, we are here at the Hearn Generating Station, it's our 10th anniversary, and the Hearn Generating Station sits in the Portlands um, in Toronto and uh, it is, uh, has been decommissioned in 1983 and is, um, was actually the largest enclosed space in Canada when it was built. And it is three times the size of the Tate Modern. It's larger than the Colosseum in Rome. And you can put the Statue of Liberty up right there. My name is Richard Florida. I'm a university professor at the University of Toronto. Lived in Toronto for nearly a decade now, about as long as the Luminato Festival. Uh, and yeah, I'm an urbanist. So this was a pretty bold move for you to hold this here. I mean, I mean that's kind of courageous because people are used to going and seeing performing arts and cultural organizations at big established institutions. So what gave you the vision of doing it here? There was a lot thinking about what is a cultural institution of the 21st century and uh, how can we create a cultural institution or a cultural statement that reflects the diversity of this city. And the idea that we sort of pursued here is regular cultural institutions are separate separated in space, because everyone has their own space, but they're not separated in time. What we're doing here is exactly the opposite. We are basically throwing everything into one space, and we also reached out to over 25 other cultural institutions to do things in the space, so the diverse audiences are coming with the diversity of product and institutions and ideas that we're presenting here. So Richard, you've always talked about this move towards urbanism and culture and arts isn't just about the SOBs, symphonies, orchestras and ballets. What do you think this does to a city, this type of movement? You know, Toronto was an industrial city. It was built on the backs and arms and legs of sweat of immigrant workers from all over the world. And now this is being repurposed. The word you use in urbanism is adaptive reuse, but this is much better than a typical adaptive reuse. This celebrates the history of one of the greatest cities in the world and repurposes it because it gives this thousand acre thing, which is between downtown, a river, a great lake, it gives it a new purpose. And what's so interesting for me is how many people are using it. When I first walked in, I was like, wow, it's so raw, it's so gritty, yeah. but there's something so beautiful about that. Is that a vision that you saw when you... Well, of course. I mean, you know, I think you walk into this building and you feel like, you know, you're in a Piranesi drawing or, you know, it's like Hadrian's Palace or yeah. something like that. But to me, it's not necessarily what fascinates me so much about the building because there's a huge danger also, in my opinion, that it will turn into becoming a venue. What's so unique about this place is that there's so many performances, but there are no walls. Well, that's right. I mean, that was really the main idea. We wanted to be open. We, we didn't want to have any walls between any of our performance spaces so that you always kind of feel what's going on in the space. And the spaces, even when we have a theater performance or a concert, the space is open to the general public to just come for free, basically, yeah. and, uh, and visit it. Should city builders and cultural institutions start thinking about places like this for events and Well, two, two things. They should think about not ruining them. I think that's the biggest thing. Generally speaking, when cities start to think about places like this, they think about how they can well, sometimes knock them down, although I think that trend is going away because there's been so many knockdowns. But then how can we kind of gussy them up and make them pretty and, you know, put, put a room here and a thing here and a festival marketplace there? And I think it's just, you know, what I was thinking about being, being here not at the performance, being here when it's more, I mean, there's stuff going on, but more or less vacant, is what it was like to work here. Think about the incredible hard work that went in, the people put in this place, and how they built the life and power of the city, and now it's a place of joy. So in a way, yeah. what's really important is to maintain this originalness, this authenticity, so we can remember the past, and not, you know, kind of shine it up, and wax it up, and buff it up, so it's just, whoa, oh, well, this is really cool. It's, as you said, it becomes a venue. It has to retain its original soul, so that we can remember all of that struggle and work that built the great cities that we all have the great privilege of inhabiting today. I also think, you know, you don't have to, you don't have to go from zero to a hundred immediately, you know. I think 
I know that a lot of people probably walk into this building and they feel like, oh my god, you have to invest like $500 million into this, right. you know. I don't no. think so. Mm -hmm. You start by doing small and you start by getting into this building and opening it up and discovering what it can do and what it can't do and you, you, you sort of try things out, you know. And I think that was sort of what a place like Berlin, for example, was very smart about, you know. They let artists take over spaces. Artists need freedom. They don't need rules or conditions under which to work. They don't need real estate developers to build huge condos and then put some gallery spaces or you know workshop spaces. Help, support, but you support by taking away barriers and not by building right. them. So should city leaders think about using urban decay in old buildings and opening them up to artists? Isn't that kind of how Soho was formed? Yeah, and, and they should get out of the way, I think, as Jorn was saying that too much city leaders, and, and in Toronto, too much of an emphasis on developers and development can hurt the process. I think to leave it be, is that's what you aren't saying, and to use it for many different things. It could be used 12 months a year for all sorts of different things, but just leave it be.